guy came up to me and said he was a poet from Hamtramck. He leaned in close and whispered, you know it's going to be the Paris of the new millennium. What if he was right? I'm sure he was talking about the mid-twenties Montparnasse neighborhood of Paris where artists and musicians drank, fought, and slept together. A lot of the art and music I love sprang from groups of artists and musicians being together in the same place at the same time. What artist wouldn't want to be in the bar with Picasso, Chagall, and Cezanne? Or watch Hemingway gathering his friends to go see the bullfights in Spain? Is it competition or the acknowledgement that being creative is okay? Is it collaboration? What causes a compact group of people to produce so much creative work simultaneously. In just a couple of years, six new art spaces have opened. It's a town that's never been short on little bars and live music is now in most of them. The city's architecture has been frozen in time since the 50s. It's just added sort of a patina since then. All the artists and musicians here seem to know each other. Identifying as an artist is not just acceptable, but it's lauded. I think there's a metaphysical undercurrent, a belief that being an artist places you in a sort of state of grace. The future is irrelevant and living is much more in the moment. Emily paints on pieces of wood she finds. She sits in alleys and vacant lots for hours to paint scenics of the neighborhood and will often create a quilt depicting the same scene. She's obsessive. She often gets bouts of depression and goes off the grid for days at a time, and then returns with a flurry of non-stop activity. On July 4th, she told me she'd been up all night working on a quilt, left her house before sunrise and started painting before the traffic and the people came out. She painted from very early when the signs and buildings showed their deeply saturated colors until the hot noonday sun washed out the colors and turned them to pastels. It got over a hundred that day. I try to look at her art objectively, but knowing that Emily is sitting in an alley or parking lot for hours, often into the night, fending off stalkers, can't help but cause me to regard it with a special fondness. In 1924, an unusual office was opened in Paris by André Breton, the Bureau of Surrealistic Research. Its purpose was to record confessions, dreams, fantasies, indiscretions, and information that might express the unconscious activity of the mind. It was open for two years every day from 4.30 to 6.30. Steve is a writer that publishes a zine called Stupor. In it, he recounts unusual stories he records on video by simply starting up conversations with strangers in local Hamtramck bars. Most of the stories involve sex and alcohol. They are jarring and raw. Steve incorporates his own reactions and sense of the people he meets at the bar into his writing. He directs the art space Public Pool. It features experimental and conceptual art. Once a month, he hosts the Good Time Writers Buffet that attracts writers from across the Midwest to read their stories. He always gets a good crowd. 
He reads the stories he has gathered, and often the subjects of his stories will read about themselves. It has become so popular that he has moved around to other venues also. Breton's experiment failed after a couple years because not that many Parisians were willing to participate and the office was empty most of the time. Steve doesn't seem to have any problems finding people to tell their stories. <laughs>